All right, so hadn't planned on making this video today, but we've had enough breaking news in the last 24 hours, and we just had some big time breaking news that just occurred about 10 minutes ago. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap up a news video today, and we're gonna begin that news video with the bad news out of New Orleans, and it's being reported that the Saints expect Michael Thomas to miss several weeks with a high ankle sprain that he suffered against uh, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the week one victory. So this is a big time problem. Uh, number one, it's a big time problem for fantasy football players. Namely, this guy who drafted him in the first round. <laughs> so, but the bigger problem and the real story of the day is the fact that the Saints are going to be without their ultimate playmaking weapon on offense for who knows how long. We don't know yet if this is a three week IR thing, or if it's just a week by week thing to see how he feels. The high ankle sprain has been one of those things that lingers with athletes when they even return, and it, you know, sort of, they don't sort of return in, return in the same capacity that they were beforehand. So it's definitely something to monitor, and it's just really, really frustrating for Saints fans who just seem to be getting all sorts of bad luck these last number of years. Yes, the win on Sunday is great, but at what cost? Um, so now going forward, we're going to be looking at an increased uh, work, work, uh, workload for Emmanuel Sanders, and I expect Traquan Smith to sort of step into it, and he's been a player that I've been expecting to break out any day now. And now the opportunity has presented itself. He's a deep threat. He's definitely somebody that can be a reliable pass catcher for Drew Brees in this offense. I believe that 100%. So I'm all aboard the Traquan Smith train. That actually sounds pretty good. The Traquan Smith train. Uh, moving on to the next bit of news out of Chicago. Apparently, Allen Robinson doesn't want to be a Chicago Bear, according to all of his social media platforms. He has wiped clean any sort of reference to the Chicago Bears from those platforms. And uh, it looks like he has requested a trade. Now, it's funny with uh, Allen Robinson because a couple of years ago, he was with the Jacksonville Jaguars during the Blake Bortles era. And a lot of people thought, well, if he went to a team that was, you know, better in the quarterback position, this would be, you know, a top shelf wide receiver in the league. And he kind of is, you know, despite poor quarterback play last year, he had a really great season. Um, but I don't know what uh, the reason is behind this, but uh, he had a cryptic tweet yesterday, something that I don't remember what it was, but it stood out as weird. And then the social media thing, which has been, you know, sort of the indicator of the last number of years, athletes scrubbing their Instagram or what have you, sort of either indicates trouble in the water or that they want to move on to greener pastures. Moving on to the Browns, this isn't so much news as it is rumor and speculation going around the internet today. I did see uh, who tweeted the original, uh, the original rumor, if you will, uh, or speculation, and I don't quite trust that source, but it has made its rounds, so now we're talking about it. Um, is trading away Odell Beckham Jr. from the Browns the right thing to do to improve uh, their chances this season? No, I don't think so. I think this is a knee-jerk reaction if it is true. Um, depends on what they're getting for them. If they get a really solid piece, like let's say something for the secondary, that would make sense. But at the same time, I think with Baker Mayfield needing to further progress and develop, uh, because that was a pretty poor first game that we saw out of him uh, against the Ravens. Yes, it's the Ravens, and they're one of the top three teams in the league. But at the same time, I don't think the addition by subtraction here formula works for Odell Beckham. I think they need to keep him at least for a little while longer. Moving on to the New York Jets. Uh, if it couldn't get any worse, it has now, as you now have a running back backfield that is going to look not so good. And it didn't look very good to begin with. So Le'Veon Bell has been put on the three-week IR with a hamstring injury, and they've signed Kalen Bollage off free agency. He will now be a New York Jet reunited with Adam Gase. I'm not I'm not really sure Kalen wanted that. But the starting running back going forward is going to be Frank Gore. So what this offense is around uh, Sam Darnold is now simply Jamison Crowder, Chris Herndon, and I would argue nothing else. Um, the Jets are going to really struggle for wins, and I think the seat for Adam Gase is going to get hotter as weeks goes on. Uh, also, I'm not really sure how this is going to affect Le'Veon Bell's um, relationship with Adam Gase because... It remains to be seen how he handled that injury on Sunday because Adam Gase came out and admitted uh, that he regrets putting him back into the game after he quote, or well not quote, but after he suggested that he knew about the injury. So that is uh, an interesting development. And the last piece of news, I just found this ironic. Um, today, the, uh, the Bengals signed uh, the kicker that the Browns just cut, Austin Siebert, and he will probably be featured in Thursday Night Football if all goes according to plan and so it sets up one of those situations where we just cut you and now you're our opponent so just I, it's not the biggest news of the day but I just thought it was strange so obviously the biggest news of the day is all of the wide receiver drama Michael Thomas injury 
the Allen Robinson trade requests, and the Odell Beckham Jr. rumors. Um, it's just week one, and it's already getting dramatic. So that's the news from tonight, and I will see you in the next one.